Mike Tyson's Punch-Out was a critical and commercial success. A sequel was pretty much inevitable. In fact, there was one in development called Mike Tyson's Intergalactic Power Punch, which would involve Mike Tyson traveling to outer space to battle space aliens. I guess because he needed a challenge and decided to take on the entire solar system after establishing himself as the baddest man on the planet. But then Iron Mike's rape conviction and Nintendo's rejection to publish the title due to the quality led them to repackage the game as Power Punch 2, even though there was no Power Punch 1. And I can give the entire game a three word review right now. It fucking sucks. Thankfully it never did end up being the official sequel, as it would have tarnished the franchise. In 1994 we did get a new installment in the Punch-Out franchise, Super Punch-Out for the Super NES. It closer resembled the original arcade games more than Mike Tyson's Punch-Out did, not that it was much of a departure to begin with or anything. But here Little Mac isn't quite as little as he was on the NES, and there's some transparency to him so you can see the important in front, something that they couldn't pull off on the NES port, which led to the decision to make Little Mac as little as he was. Another element taken from the original arcade is that you fight one round instead of three, and it's three minutes real time as opposed to an accelerated clock. Personally, I like the three rounds better, as it made for some climactic finishes and trying to race the clock and knocking your opponent down three times for a TKO, or possibly surviving the fight by getting through a round after being knocked down twice. I don't know, I just found the format to be a little more exciting and certainly was more authentic. Plus, when the time runs out, the winner isn't decided by decision. You just lose because you didn't knock the guy out in time. I know this is an arcade-style boxing game, not a simulation, but I liked having some of those realistic elements in there too. The gameplay is largely the same formula as its predecessors. You'll face off against a variety of wacky, over-the-top international stereotypes, with the focus not on button mashing, but of memorizing your opponent's patterns and executing your attack and defense utilizing this information. The fighters have more special moves now, many of which are cued by their manager calling out to them with the dialogue bubbles. Speaking of managers, there's no Doc Lewis, which is a bummer. Because there are no timed rounds, you won't get any of Doc's advice, recommendations for the Nintendo Fun Club, and there'll be no bicycle theft cutscenes in front of a beautiful New York City backdrop after winning the titles. Oh well. At least the opponent still gets to trash talk you, although this time it's only one pre-match quote, and then one rematch pre-match quote if you end up losing to them. The controls remain fluid and are actually improved upon, with the duck function being only one press of the down button as opposed to two, and now that up alone blocks the head like it should, and the body blocking is defaulted without pressing anything. And on top of the special uppercut punch that deals out a significant amount of damage, you also have a special body shot, and special rapid punches, which you'll earn not from acquiring stars that give you a maximum of three, instead you'll build up a momentum meter which is displayed at the bottom of the screen. Landing consecutive punches builds up your momentum, and when it maxes out, you can use the special punches as many times as you want until you get hit, in which case the momentum meter drops. The soundtrack is decent, although the fight songs are nowhere near as memorable as the NES punch out. But the quality is good, including crisp sound effects and voice clips from Little Mac, the ref, ring announcer, and trash talking opponents. Speaking of opponents, there are three returning characters from the NES punch out and three characters who were part of one of the earlier two arcade games, plus ten brand new characters, if you count the four that appear in the hidden special circuit. So let's get on with it. Of course we start out the minor circuit with a journeyman from France with a 1 in 99 record. Sound familiar? Instead of Glass Joe, this time it's Gabby J. But his difficulty is just as pathetic. Just punch the shit out of him. He'll try to sneak a jab or a hook in there every once in a while, but more often than not, he just stands there like a dumbass. One of his special moves is very similar to Glass Joe's. He'll drop back, yell, come on, and then hop towards you and attempt a hook. Considering how easy it is to see it coming, there's no way you should take this shot. His other specialty involves just trying to avoid you. His manager will yell for his old ass to catch his breath, and he'll focus on trying to block or dodge you. If he manages to do so for a little while, he'll regain some energy. But it's almost impossible for this to happen, so long as you try. Even a novice at Punch-Out should be able to take him down in under a minute. And since you've probably never seen it before, he has Gabby J's victory sequence. Yay! 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 Bear Hugger is a recycled character from the Super Punch-Out arcade game. He's a big bastard, who's mostly unaffected by body blows. He'll just pull a goofy face if you try it, unless you give him a well-timed shot while he's taunting you. Otherwise, it's all to the head, and it will only work during counterattacks, most notably after he comes crashing down with both hands. You have to duck underneath this attack or you'll get blasted. 
you'll get more shots countering this than any of his regular attacks. And you can trigger him to attack you this way by throwing a shot to his face, which he'll block then quickly attack, so get ready to duck. His specialty will commence when he backs up, then jogs back towards you and unleashes some standard punches consecutively. Give him a shot to the head when he approaches you to cancel this whole thing out. Repeat the strategy until you take him down. The number one contender for the minor circuit title is Piston Hurricane, another returning character. This one from the first Punch Out arcade game. He'll throw standard jabs, hooks, and the occasional uppercut, all of which aren't hard to see coming. Dodge and attack. He also doesn't defend very well, so take a few shots at him when he's in between attacks and build up your momentum meter. He'll unleash his hurricane rush when he hops to the side, making a weird grunt noise, and then alternates between jabs and body shots. Block these shots accordingly, and then dodge the uppercut at the end, or you can give him a shot as soon as he comes forward with the rush. When Piston's manager orders him to show his fancy footwork, he'll shuffle around a bit to throw you off before throwing some body shots and jabs. Like the hurricane rush, you can block all this shit, or even easier by taking a shot before he even gets the attack started. Bald Bull makes his return from Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, only this time he's dropped from the World and Major Circuit and settled as the Minor Circuit Champion. Dodge and counter his jabs, hooks, and uppercuts. And watch out for a couple tricks he has up his sleeve. One is where he'll do this ducking motion a few times before unleashing an uppercut. And the other he'll bob back and forth and then throw two jabs and an uppercut. Of course, he also brought back the Bull Charge, where he'll back up against the ropes and hop a few times before unleashing his deadly uppercut, which will floor you no matter how much energy you have. On his third hop, give him a body shot that will send him to the canvas. Once you get the TKO on him, you'll have won the Minor Circuit Championship, but like I said, you unfortunately don't get the cutscene in front of the Statue of Liberty. The first fighter in the Major Circuit is Bob Charlie, not at all a reference to Bob Marley. He'll let you beat the piss out of him in the early stages of the match. I guess he's really high or something. He'll take a few swings, but they're easy to counter. He'll drop back and take three swirling uppercuts. Only the last one can hit you, though. The other two are basically his wind-up shots, and they also serve as an easy way to time his attack. At one point, he'll begin the most retarded sequence in the game, where he'll lay back, apparently shrug, while going, who, who, what is he, a fucking owl? It serves as nothing but leaving himself as an open target. Bob's difficulty really should have put him in the minor circuit, but oh well. Take the easy win and move on to the next combatant. Another returning character from the Super Punch-Out arcade game, Dragon Chan. Mr. Chan seems to have a kickboxing background, and evidently doesn't understand that the rules in standard boxing don't allow kicking. More alarming is the fact that the referee doesn't give a shit. He has an odd timing with his jabs. He'll back up a bit, wind up, and take his shot. His body blows a similar and awkward timing. He'll pitter-patter a bit before delivering it. These attacks aren't hard to avoid once you know them, but at first you might be dodging too soon once you see him moving, so keep an eye on that. Two of his specialties involve the aforementioned illegal kicking. One is where he'll jump from one of the ropes to the other and come in with a deadly kick to the head, duck underneath this. It's an instant knockdown otherwise. His other kicking specialty has him doing three consecutive jumping kicks to the head. He'll shift to one side and kick from there, dodge to the opposite side of each kick. The pattern is random, so react effectively here. His last trick doesn't involve him attacking at all. He'll meditate briefly before regaining some energy. You could attack him in this state to break up the healing process, but it will trigger his triple kick attack, so only bother with this if you're confident you can evade it with no problem. Next up is Masked Muscle, the second consecutive opponent who's confused about their fighting profession, in this case Lucha Libre Pro Wrestling. Make sure that when you counter his hooks, you're going to have to punch with the hand that is closer to him, since he'll follow through so far that your far side hand won't even be able to reach him. So if he swings with his left hand, counter with your left as well. When his manager calls out to him to spit in your eye, he'll lean back and hawk a big loogie at you. Dodge it, or vision will be impaired momentarily, and you won't be able to attack. If you're in this state, try to watch him as best you can in this temporary partial blindness and avoid his attacks. Soon after, your clear vision will return and you'll be able to hit him again. His other big specialty is a double headbutt maneuver. Without much warning, he'll lean his head back and unleash a vicious pair of consecutive headbutts. Timing your dodge isn't easy, especially with how quick he pulls this move off, but it will strongly increase your chances of winning since this shot will take out a significant amount of energy. 
the champion of the major circuit is Mr. Sandman, who, like his palette swap, Bull Bull, has dropped down a division since his last appearance in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. I guess these guys' best days are behind them. Sandman's standard punches aren't the quickest in the world, so you should have no problem countering them. Just watch out for him to do his little fake out here before he fires off a series of three jabs. Just block the first two and then dodge the third. It's too hellacious to block. After you knock him down twice, he'll pull out all the stops with his dreaded three uppercut combo once his manager tells him to give you full power. You have to time your dodge as well. These uppercuts come at a fine clip, much like in Mike Tyson's punch out. When you take him down, you'll be awarded the major circuit title. The world circuit kicks off with an Irish bloke named Aaron Ryan. His standard punches come off quicker than the previous fighters. He'll have more punches thrown at a time, and he'll shift around a bit sometimes. Things aren't getting any easier here. His first specialty is basically Piston Hurricane's Hurricane Rush. Alternating jabs with body shots followed by a hard uppercut at the end. Only Ryan's punches will deal more damage, and he'll do it a second time right after. Your regular punches won't do much to Aaron Ryan's stamina. In order to beat him, you're going to have to deliver your special punches, so keep that momentum meter high. When you connect with one of those special punches, it will piss him off and he'll try to grab a hold of you and squeeze out some of your energy. You can counter this by giving him a shot to the gut when he briefly raises his glove before the grab. And if you do end up getting squeezed, make sure you dodge the uppercut that comes right after it. It'll hurt. After finishing him off, Hiki Kajero is next. How the hell does a 19 year old already have 22 fights under their belt and become the number 2 contender for the world title with such a mediocre record on top of it? Must be blowing somebody in the rankings committee. Anyway, Kajero has some pretty flashy moves. First off, he's damn near impossible to hit unless you're countering him. And he's pretty quick, so you're gonna have to react fast. He'll do this goofy dance real quick, hopping back and forth twice, and then firing off three jabs followed by an uppercut. Your best bet is to block the jabs and counter the uppercut. Then his manager calls out for him to do the Mirage Dance, which is pretty reminiscent of Great Tiger's teleportation attack. Only this time he won't attack you during the dance, and you can actually get a body shot in if you time it right. The only point of this Mirage Dance really is to set up his next move, which will usually be a combo of two jabs or two hooks. His other special move involves beating you with his hair, which may be the lamest attack in the game, at least in concept. In practice, it's quite effective. He'll crouch down and then start to swing his head around, twirling his luscious locks in your direction twice. Dodge to the left on the first go around and then duck in the second attempt quickly. Take him down and it's on to Mad Clown. You know that times are tough for the WVBA when the number one contender for their championship is a freaking clown. And am I the only one that's noticing the subpar win loss records for these fighters? So Mad Clown's a bit of a pain in the ass. Some of his special attacks are tough to get used to and deal out a lot of damage. Aside from the standard punches, keep an eye for his backhand shot, which you'll want to avoid by dodging to the opposite side where the punch is coming from, and then counter with the opposite hand. You won't be able to reach him with the other fist. Similar to his palette swap bear hugger's double fist attack, Mad Clown will come down swinging with both fists, but he'll clamp your head, swing you across the ropes, and deliver a shot that'll drain a shitload of energy. The only way to avoid all this is to duck the initial fist sandwich, so keep an eye out for his wind-up. His other specialty is the only time I've ever seen a prize fighter juggling shit, even out of the ring, never mind in the fucking ring. He'll back up and juggle some balls, and then toss two at you at a time, either in the left, center, or right side. There'll be one open spot for you to either dodge towards, or just stand idly. He'll throw three sets at you, and then dive towards you with a massive shot that will send you to the canvas if it connects. Be prepared after the third set of balls and quickly duck. After you knock him down the second time, his manager will yell showtime and he'll start going apeshit with punches, usually a pair of jabs followed by a hook, uppercut, or backhand. Block the jabs since they're too damn fast and then counter attack the follow up. Also keep in mind that you can hardly ever punch him in the gut, just like Bear Hogger. Only you'll only be able to get this if he's doing his stupid taunt, and it's even harder to pull off here. It's unnecessary in defeating him anyway. The champion of the world circuit is once again Super Macho Man. He's apparently 28, but he looks about 20 years older than that, at least. The gray hair doesn't help his cause either. At least this time he's sporting a tan. He looks way more authentically Hollywood with his hot dog colored skin as opposed to the pasty pale white he had in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. There is a discrepancy with his win-loss record though. In Mike Tyson's Punch-Out he was 35-0, and now he's 29-3. How the hell does that happen? 
Anyways, although Super Macho Man is a power swap of masked muscle, you're not required to punch him in the corresponding direction that he punches towards during his hooks. You can punch in either direction. He does, however, have some deadly special attacks, one of which makes its return from the NES game. Two variations of the spin punch. The first one is the single spin punch that will be triggered by his shaky fist. You have to duck to avoid this. It's not an automatic knockdown, but it will deal a hefty blow. Duck again. The amount of punches here varies, but he'll max out at 5. He also has a series of attacks that are called exercise programs. And you can tell which one is coming because his trainer tells him which one to use. Program A is 4 jabs in a row. Block these, you won't be able to dodge them. Program B is 3 hooks to the body. Don't press anything and block low. And program C is 3 uppercuts in a row. Dodge them and counterattack. Soon enough, you'll have TKO'd his ass and won the world championship. And that, my friends, is the end of the game. Unless you've run the table and beaten everyone without losing, in which case you'll get the hidden special circuit with four new fighters. Now, if you've lost a match in any of the circuits, you can go back to any one you want and try that circuit again. You don't necessarily have to beat the entire game all over again. The first fighter in the special circuit is Narciss Prince, a cocky little pretty boy fuck who does everything he can to protect his face. Which of course gives you all the more reason to knock this little twerp's block off. He'll be defending the shit out of his face, so you're gonna have to work some body blows to set up the headshots. On jabs and hooks, you'll only get one body shot, not enough to stun him. On his uppercuts though, you'll be able to stun him with a body blow and then start working the face. He'll get pissed and this will start kicking the fight into high gear, which you'll need to do to win this fight. If you don't get any headshots in, the pace will be pretty deliberate all the way through. Not to mention his body can withstand a lot more punishment than his face, and the time will run out on you. He'll flash for a second and then shift his arms a bit before delivering three straight jabs. Block them all, hit him in the gut, and then start to go to town on his face. Once you start getting some headshots in and piss him off, he'll start attacking at a faster rate. They'll all be standard punches, just a quicker tempo, and you'll be able to counter with headshots after he misses with any punch. After taking him down, your next opponent is Hoi Carlo, a Chinese man so old I think he worked on the Great Wall. He's also a pain in the ass. Most of his attacks involve flagrant breaking of the rules when he smashes you with his cane. One of his main attacks will involve three consecutive shots with this cane to the head or body, followed by a final shot to the opposite target. Block the first three shots, dodge the last one, and then attack. Keep in mind that you'll have to alternate headshots, as he'll be leaned over to one particular side. One of the few times he actually uses his fist is his dangerous spinning backhand shot. The only way to avoid this is with a well-timed duck. He'll back off to a corner of the ring and come down with a hard quick swing with the cane. Dodge to the opposite side he's coming from and punch him with the hand that's closer to him. Keep in mind that he might switch which side of the ring he's on before attacking. Another move he does later on in the fight is a gauntlet of cane shots. There'll be four sets of three cane shots at a time, two of them headshots, two of them body blows, and their arrangement is always random. All you can do is trust your reflexes and block all these attacks. Stay smart when fighting Carlo. Don't attack him randomly, he'll block you every time and usually counter with a toss against the ropes and a cane shot. Once you get used to his bullshit, you'll be able to take him out. Rick Bruiser is the number one contender for the special circuit title. Rick's punches are fast and ferocious. Your reflexes and awareness level should be at their A game for this one. When he briefly shakes, get ready for a hook, jab, and uppercut combination. Block low, then high, then dodge, and attack. His next move is yet another example of these assholes bending the rules like Gumby. If you mistime a punch and he blocks it, he'll sometimes swing his elbow down at you, crushing your hand, which will render it useless for a short period of time. You have to dodge this one really quickly or you're going to end up short-handed. He'll also do this elbow to the hand following an uppercut, but in this instance it won't damage your hand for some reason. When he hops around a few times, get ready to dodge you so you won't be affected when he stomps the mat, shaking it in an attempt to immobilize you. If he succeeds, he'll throw a hellacious uppercut that'll knock you down if it connects. Another thing to keep an eye on is sometimes after hitting him, he'll remain leaned back for a second, and then he'll come right out with a huge jab. Be ready to dodge or block this. Rick Bruiser is a bitch to defeat, and he seems impossible at first. But once you get acquainted with his tendencies, you have a fighting chance. Next up is Rick's twin brother, Nick Bruiser. Am I the only one that thought that this was kind of lame to have the last two fighters practically the same guy? And both are pretty uninspired characters to begin with. Nick is no nonsense though, and his mannerisms are robotic. 
he doesn't defend himself very well. You can punch him around quite a bit, but his punches are fucking powerful, and he doesn't even facially react to any of your punches. I told you this guy's a robot. He'll drop back and launch himself at you with a nasty shot that will knock you to the mat. Make sure you dodge this shit, and duck underneath the two follow-up punches he throws your way. Watch out for his elbows to the hand. Much like his younger brother, it'll render your hand useless. But he'll follow it up with a second attempt, which can leave you without the use of both hands, and all you can do is avoid everything until you get your hands back, which seems like a lot longer than it actually is. He'll shuffle his feet a bit real quick before throwing two consecutive uppercuts your way. Dodge these. Finally, he has a combination that is absolutely ruthless. It'll be six punches, and your blocking won't work, so you have to dodge them all. All I can say is be aware, trust your reflexes, and good luck, fucker. After disposing of this droid, you'll have won the special circuit title. The credits will roll, and each fighter from the game will have a little quip reacting to their defeat. And the name you inputted at the beginning will be included in the special thanks. So that's Super Punch Out. It didn't have the charm, addictiveness, or the memorable characters of its predecessor, but it's still a worthy sequel that's aged pretty damn well. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.